I am delighted to have uh, Tennessee volunteer head coach Lane Kiffin with us. Thank you for joining us, Lane. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it very much. Uh, you know, I'm an old Tennessee boy. I grew up in a little town called Lawrenceburg over there and uh, followed. Uh, I remember when Johnny Majors was uh, was playing and uh, and the great Tennessee tradition and so forth. And uh, I tell you what, you've got people excited uh, in uh, in Tennessee. Uh, you've you've come in. Uh, you know, with a, with a flair and, uh, and an enthusiasm, and you had a, apparently a real good recruiting uh, uh, class coming in. Yeah, we're excited about what's going on right now. We're into our seventh month of being here, and uh, our staff can't wait to get going. We're back to, to work this week, and our players come Monday officially. So um, it'll be great to get a chance to get these, this highly talented freshman class of guys in to work with our older guys and get a chance to get on the field with them. Oh, what do you got? You you've got the 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 number one uh, rated running back in the country. I think Bryce Brown out of Wichita uh, is uh, is coming in, and you've got a highly uh, a highly touted defensive back. I think it was about rated about fourth or something. So, uh, uh, what what is the key to recruiting uh, these young players? I know you uh, you came from the pros. You don't have to worry about that in that respect anyway. Um, do you do you personally engage uh, in in the recruiting effort? Yes, definitely. What we have to do is put together a plan and show them what their three to four to five years here will be like and why they should come to the University of Tennessee. Obviously, there's great tradition here of players and coaches, and we're playing the best conference in the country, but also to be able to come come in and our staff and what we're going to do offensively, defensively, and special teams, we have to show them exactly how they fit in and why they should come here and how eventually and then that will help their draft status. Uh, because so many kids nowadays are looking forward to uh, to playing professional football, uh, but in the meantime, of course, um, I, I read where you have emphasized the fact that they're still college students and uh, they've got to uh, they've got to hit the books and remain uh, out of trouble. How's that working out? It's really working out well. We, we've had great results. We had our highest football GPA semester in, in four years and the highest jump in a long time from from the semester before we got here to this semester, and so. It's been great, and they've really represented us well off the field, uh, around the, around the campus, and around the community. Also, uh, Lane, a lot of us who are college uh, fans are, are certainly pro fans, and and uh, and uh, really followed you as as the youngest professional football coach uh, when you were working for Al Davis and the Raiders. So I, I guess you're used to adversity. <laughs> so uh, you're now, I guess, one of the youngest uh, uh, college head co- head coaches. Well, I think I think going into the NFL at such a young age, at 31, of being being a head coach, really nobody talks about the age anymore because I was, you know, doing that and then coming here, it's kind of you've already been a head coach and you've been at the highest level, so it's really helped prepare me for this situation and to uh, to help us build Tennessee football and continue a great tradition. Well, when you uh, when you came here, you kind of uh, you kind of twisted some tails, you know, with your traditional uh, adversaries and got folks uh, talking and a lot of attention. Uh, uh, University of uh, of uh, Florida uh, in particular and uh, you know, uh, in the in the talk radio business, sometimes we uh, we accuse one of uh, 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 each other of uh, kind of sparking a little controversy in order to get people's attention. Was there a little bit of that involved there? Well, looking at it, what had to happen is we had to we had to get on the national map again, and and Tennessee uh, for the way recruiting is nowadays, we need impact players immediately, and there are no four or five year plans. They don't give you that long anymore. There's too much pressure to win, so. Mm-hmm. We had to go out and get players right away, and so um, some of the things, I don't love everything I had to do, but I felt it was things that I had to do to make us a national presence in Sports Illustrated and on Sports Center because that's what kids nowadays are watching. Uh, it is true. It is true. Uh, it's not all good, but it's a fact. Uh, you, mentioned, uh, you mentioned you were thinking about putting up a billboard in South Florida. Uh, you still got that on the agenda? Yeah, we're still continuing to work on marketing campaigns to sell tickets and to continue to uh, to get the power tea out there around the country. Now that's going to go over well in South Florida, I'll bet. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> well, you uh, you just had a a, a meeting of, of all the coaches and so forth, and this was uh, a subject of uh, of conversation. But uh, we all know it comes down to to wins and and losses. Uh, you know, I saw years ago when. Uh, 
uh, when when Johnny Majors didn't work out, he'd been he'd been the greatest hero in the in the history of Tennessee college football, and you know he had kind of rough sledding, and uh, and they let him go. So it's it's a tough game out there, and sometimes when people read about the high salaries and and so forth, they they don't realize. Uh, how tenuous uh, these coaches' uh, uh, jobs are, and you're right. They you don't you don't have a long term plan, but you've got uh, you've got uh, Florida away this year. You've got Alabama uh, away uh, this year. Uh, how do you see how do you see them stacking up? Is is Florida going to be the class of the conference again this year? Well, I would think so. Both pro- programs are really hitting on all cylinders. Uh, Florida's had longer to be there with this being their fifth year together as a staff, so they're probably a little more deep than Alabama. And uh, I can't imagine being more talented than Florida is right now. You watch them on film, and they have great players at every position. So uh, I would, I would imagine, it'd be hard for Florida to even lose a game with those players. Did you vote for Tebow All SEC? I sure did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you won't go that far, will you? Well, listen, Lane Kiffin, thank you very much for being with us, and good luck to you.